Yeah, I'm late. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm late on the challenge. It's the fifth day and I actually did only three drawings. I thought I could do it because, well, I, I have some years uh, in, in drawing, like I've been drawing hard since, I don't know. And thinking about a challenge like this, I think like, well, I can tackle it. I just have to do what I do every day. But the thing is, the, the biggest problem that I'm having is like I don't have my priorities straight. And I think that drawing and creating artwork is something that you really have to be cautiously, cautiously conscious about it. Because the thing that took the most time out of my drawing process is whenever I was about to start and whenever I was about to uh, have an idea, I got my priorities all mixed up and I couldn't actually focus. Of course, I finished the three drawings. Uh, it's the fifth day and it's not lack of trying, but actually uh, the right focus and the right energy towards this challenge. I've really tried, I've drawn for intense hours this week and even though I couldn't uh, reach the amount of drawings that I wanted at first. So uh, to, the, to this day on, I'm trying to approach these drawings in a different manner and that's what I want to figure out uh, this next week or for the next drawings. So uh, yeah, <laughs> we are here at Harumatsuri Kurichiba at Park Barigui. It's a Japanese event here uh, that they celebrate the coming of the Japanese to Brazil. And it's been really nice, it's really warm in here. <laughs> and some people said that Japan is warm also, so it, it feels very Japanese. So <laughs> let's take a walk. Okay, <laughs> I fried my head a little bit at the start of the challenge. Of course, I didn't give up, that's not the point, but things don't always go as planned. And that doesn't necessarily have to be bad. As I explained before, it's not the lack of trying. If I count up, at the third day I had done, man, 20 ink drawings that weren't recorded. <laughs> that should be enough to partially finish the challenge, but what I wanted to present or what I felt it resonated well with the material that we are publishing here, I simply wasn't able to acquire at that moment. That counts up as a future note to myself that I can only fight the way I train and that might be the reason why I'm in and out of touch of many things that I do. This episode is going to be a little different. Uh, for the first time, you'll see an artwork being made digitally and that will affect the next in Inktober drawings that I'll do. Uh, I've decided that in order to finish this challenge, I want to create a one-shot gag comic that got a little bit of a kinky feeling to it. <laughs> I'm not sure how many drawings that will take, but I'm excited to see how that's gonna turn out. I feel like I've always avoided compromising to create something based on a singular concept piece that I've made 
and that sounds like a nice way to improve and both finish the task. For the character, uh, at first I'm always thinking about a story, uh, something that I want to tell, even though that can be something that is not so clear in your head or so well defined. Of course, you need a place to start. You cannot start from nothing. You can, you, you, you should have something at your, at your head, and you can sprout uh, the next ideas out of it. So for this character, I had in my mind uh, the keyword courage, and with that courage, this character will make bad decisions. So uh, of course, you will be able to read the comic afterwards but uh, there is something bad that will happen from eating a certain kind of fruit and because the character is kind of dumb and too, too brave uh, he'll suffer the consequences so uh, for every line or for every uh, big decision that I do I try to make that a little bit character based and afterwards everything together will make that feeling uh, appear somehow of course, you can come and go with your decisions. If you feel like it, you can change uh, base ideas. But after a while working on the same concept, uh, the decisions get clearer and clearer. The main technique that I'm using here, I'm going in and out of lines and, and, and big strokes, big, big ink strokes. So in that way I can go in and out with the borders and the silhouette of this character. So I'm trying to figure out uh, the whole proportion thing, uh, how the, the big parts of this character body will communicate with each other. And that's the main thing that I try to acquire at first. Of course, uh, later on, I start applying uh, some new details and that's not uh, a fixed rule. Whenever I give uh, a student a, a tip about uh, creating characters or doing anything, it's not like you have to, to, to look at that in a, like you are in a, how can I say, in a facility, in, a, in an industry operating a huge machine. It's not like you cannot leave that task. Uh, if you take a look at, at many times, I will unfocus of the big picture and focus on a small picture like the face or the hands. And that's just something that you can do. Of course, you have the big troubles to fix and the big troubles to, uh, big troubles. Uh, uh, I say troubles because uh, every design aspect, you can look at it as a problem that you solve or a question that you answer. Uh, not in a negative way, but just uh, in a way that you can approach this, uh, this act uh, properly. But oh, where I was, I just forgot. But <laughs> you can go in and out the big and the small picture uh, without uh, forgetting that you have something to do or other things to, to solve on the picture, right? I'm not a master of creating characters, but uh, Stephen Silver uh, is a great inspiration to me. Uh, he created the characters from Danny Phantom, and he talks about uh, remembering people or remembering faces of, of people that you know or getting inspired by real people. And whenever you're creating a character, you have the many reasons that you are doing that and the many uh, uh, aspects of the briefing that you have to base on and at many times you can look at your memory or you can look around you with people that you know and try to to find on that real person the characteristics that you want to bring to your character like uh, every character that i draw i try to remember people that i know not every character but i love re remembering that and, and, and looking for ways to, to approach in that sense with my characters because it, it creates a, a, how can I say, a weird feeling of realism that only human memory might be able to acquire. And if you don't decide to do that, of course, in a way you will do that, but if you do it consciously, you can actually 
uh, use that as a useful tool and reliable tool to create compelling characters. One thing that you might agree with me, uh, if you take a look at the designs and the, the, the things out there, the artworks are out there and the concept works out there, I feel that they lack some kind of uh, facial expression and that's uh, a thing that I, I didn't give so much attention for many years. Like if you open ArtStation for example, you will find just a few examples of artwork that the characters have an open mouth and a uh, ambiguous feeling uh, being expressed in the characters' faces. Normally they look like dolls or, or, or angry creatures or angry males. And that's not bad for itself, it's just that for my artwork I want to find ways to express uh, more emotion. And if you take a look at the time lapse, I take a lot, a lot of time trying to figure out the mouth design because I wanted her to express some kind of hunger or, or willing to eat something. And that kind of open mouth is not just a open mouth, it's something, it's a feeling that uh, it was a little bit hard to acquire, but I, I love how it turned out and, and I'm glad that I went that way. There is these, these dudes that I, I, I love looking at it. Uh, this dude called Akihiko Yoshida, this dude looks <laughs> like someone I know. Uh, Akihiko Yoshida, I love his work and I was super inspired by him while, while I was doing this piece. And if you take a look at it, he actually has some kind of color quality to his darkest colors. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know if that makes sense, but I, th I feel like his darks, his most dark colors, they have a, a saturation to it. And I wanted to bring that to, to, to this design. If you take a look at the, the, the darkest things, the darkest uh, ink strokes that I passed on, you can take a look and feel that they have this reddish color to it. Man, I feel like, like I'm butchering the English language, but <laughs> I hope that makes sense. One way that I look at it, it, it sounds weird, but uh, whenever I'm working with ink on paper, I have this moment uh, that I call black art, because I'm using black ink and I have to do art with black, because black is not a, a, a color so common in nature in a way that it doesn't make part of, of everyday objects in a, a literal way, like things are not pitch black, but whenever you, you use like uh, this nunking ink, uh, that is f super black and, and you, you don't have options. So manga artists and comic book artists, they use that black ink and create some kind of art with it. Sometimes they represent shadows with it, sometimes they represent materials or uh, different shapes, and it's kind of different dimension because that's not a, a, how can I say, that doesn't necessarily represent a physical aspect in a literal manner, because that's probably not the case. So you have to try to, to invoke if you want to, uh, in my case, I want to, I, I want to try to evoke uh, natural feelings to it, but I create an analogy to nature using the color black. Um, that, that can be in ways of texture, shadow, or a base color of things. So whenever you see a manga or a comic in black and white, you see that probably there are three different tones and those three different tones, they made all kinds of crazy shapes. And that's one, one thing that I really want to, to, to use it. For these character colors, uh, one thing that I want to make sure is that the values or uh, the brightness of each color that composes the character creates a, a good rhythm. I want to make sure that looks good in black and white. But uh, for the colors, I wanted to orchestrate uh, many different uh, reds. So this character, uh, as my cultural background uh, made me feel it was the right decision, I wanted to use red to represent uh, 
a tone of courage for this character. So um, it's uh, everything. It's kind of based on red, orange, and yellow somehow. Should be awake by now. He should be drawing. He should be finishing October. Pedro, Pedro, wake up, Pedro. Ah, I got you, huh? I've been doing this all day, dude. Hey, it's nice to see you. Make sure to to like, subscribe, and. Leave a comment down below. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>